of Satan who's doing this deception. Keep going out. Come. Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Oh, keep going. Verse 11, and for this cause the Most High shall send them strong delusion uh -huh. that they should believe a lie. And that's the real point too. Because ultimately in this faith we understand that it's coming down to certain people already being chosen for salvation and other people already being chosen to be destroyed. So at the end of the day, if you're preaching a different doctrine concerning this microchip, which once again, to push that vibration is the mark of the beast, you're not only walking into a ditch yourself, but you're leading other people to go into that ditch. But on a higher level, the Lord is the one deceiving you anyway. So there's nothing you can really do about it anyway. Some people, like Yeshaya always says, they really believe the bullshit. They really believe, <laughs> they really believe certain philosophies that are so crazy, you know? But it's because we can say that knowing that the Lord gave us the proper knowledge. And because we have the proper knowledge, we can look at somebody else and say, they believe the bullshit because the Lord gave them that bullshit to believe. That's the craziest part in this truth. Keep going. Okay, oh, go on. Yeah. This is the uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. It says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, uh -huh. wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, uh -huh. according to the prince of the power of the air, yeah. the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we had all our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others read the um the first verse again for me this is ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 uh -huh. and you hath he quickened yeah. who were dead in trespasses and sins yeah us have, have he quickened by what by the comforter and what is a comforter it's not a man it's the holy spirit and what is the Holy Spirit? It's basically the energy, the force, that life force that comes down by Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that ministers to us by the holy angels, and that gives us this knowledge. That's what quickens us. And what's one of the many facets of this knowledge that the Lord has bestowed upon us? It's understanding and knowing what this mark of the beast is. It's knowing what the microchip is. So now we've come out of the world, and we've been quickened. That's what the word educate truly means it means to draw from within so we've already had the knowledge anyway and certain people that can't get it that don't know what the microchip is they didn't have the knowledge that knowledge was never given to them so they can't become quickened but right, we'll go back the second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12 that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Exactly. They had pleasure in unrighteousness. And that goes back to wisdom of Solomon in the third chapter. A lot of people are going to be destroyed according to their own imaginations. Why? Because they didn't want to believe the truth. You see, right now you have the opportunity to receive salvation. You have the opportunity right now to believe words. What's up, my brother? You got a question? No, no, I want to you want to join? The best way is to actually listen. Because hey, guess he, what? We he, were all... He came up, said Shalom. He knows something. Oh, yeah? You know? So you've heard about it, right? So what's your tribe? I'm curious. I don't, I don't... Come right here. Come look at the sign. That's why we have it out. So people like you can come up here and you can gain a little bit of knowledge. That's why we out here. Where you from? Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. Okay, so more than likely, you're probably from the tribe of Judah. Hey, let me... You, you said... Are we GMS? Yeah, I know you guys are GMS. I follow you guys. Okay, that's what's up. Okay. How much have you um? How much have you learned? How much do you know? So you just now learned your tribe, right? No, I I, I knew all of this before. But okay. I'm just now coming up. Oh, okay. Do you do you typically learn from GMS or any other camp? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm learning from GMS now, but. Uh -huh. I would say a year ago. Like, oh, yeah. Um, no, yeah. A year ago, I was in Safari. Um, and then when I realized I was in Safari, I was Okay, that's good. Get Romans, um, get Romans 8, verse 16. So we'll get that too, because guess what? It's funny you said that, because I first started learning from this dude named Zabak. I started learning from him. Yeah, he's mainly up in New York. He has a few camps around here too. But um, I started watching it because it was entertaining. And I was I was looking at my true nationality too, I'm a Gadite. 
So I was looking up Native American history and so on and so forth, right? And then all of a sudden I came across Zabak. And then he was really, really entertaining. He's also a great speaker, I'll, tell, I'll say that. And he knows a lot of knowledge too. But there are certain assets of the scriptures that he doesn't speak truth to. But that's a different story. You're like, yeah. The chip, so you already know that. The main point is because just like you said, it was the same thing for me. I actually found GMS videos because Zabak over time, I'm like, all right, it's fun, it's entertaining, but I'm not getting any kind of knowledge. Right? You're not really building up my spirit or anything. He doesn't really go into that deeper spiritual topics anyway. Which sometimes you will and you will not get out here on the highways and byways. It all depends. Go ahead and read that out. Romans 8 and 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. So the brother read that. I just wanted to ask you a question. So you believe that you're a Hebrew Israelite, right? Okay, why do you believe that? Uh... Well, keep in mind what, what we just read. Want me to read it again? Romans 8. Uh huh. When I first read about the truth, uh -huh. from a Negro on the Israel. Say it again? From a Negro on the Israel life on Instagram. Uh huh. It kind of, I guess you can say, kind of connected with my spirit. But I just really didn't understand the whole, I guess the whole deeper thing inside the life. Uh huh. Like I always knew that the angels were dark skin. Uh -huh. uh, the most powerful was a dark skin man. Uh -huh. But I never really knew his name, and that's what I was searching for. Right. Okay. You got the name? What's yeah, his name? Come. And what's his name? Come, come. And you know, you know what's another deeper thing too? Because now that we've possibly identified, possibly identified your tribe, right? You also want to be able to explain why you have that faith, and then if anybody asks, you want to be able to explain your tribe as well. You gotta know why you're from where you're from. Does that make sense? Let's go to Genesis 49 because you've heard of prophecy, right? Prophecy. So that's exactly the reason how we know who we are. Because of what the Bible tells us where certain people would be in these end days. So it describes where they would be. It gives a little bit of characteristics. And so we can look at those two assets of the scriptures and we can say, alright, I can identify with that prophecy right there in my people. That's how I sort of know, okay, I may be from this tribe. And at the end of the day, we're all going to find out when the Lord returns anyway, you know? But right now, like you said and like the scriptures said, then our spirit bears witness with the Lord's spirit, right? So we're going to read some prophecy really quickly, and we'll just show you that, well, we'll break down this two. So you can read uh, 49 and 1, and then just jump down to verse 8. This is Genesis chapter 49, verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last day. You know who Jacob is? Come on, you know what his name was changed to, right? Mm -mm. Jacob's name was changed to Yashar Ali. Oh, yes. Yeah. There you go. Keep going. Verse 8. It says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Mm -hmm. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. It says that because Judah is the main tribe. That's why it says, Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. And then the next sentence, or phrase, I guess, to be grammatically correct, it says, Your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. Because soon, Judah is going to be able to literally put his hand in the neck, like this, of his enemies. And he's going to get that quote unquote payback for guess what? Slavery. So that's coming. Keep going. Come. Thou father's children shall bow down before thee. Right. Verse 9 Judah is a lion's wealth. Uh huh. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He, gone. he stooped down, he couched as a lion, mm -hmm. and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Because that's Judah's spirit. Judah has that aggressive, go-getter type mentality, right? But then guess what? During like the 50s and the 60s, you had the movement, the civil rights movements. So Judah was that lion at first. They may have been a little bit wild and sporadic doing it in terms of all the protests and everything. But then over time throughout the 70s and the 80s and really even the 90s we can say but like the 70s and the 80s Judah fell asleep and they became that young lion and they just fell over all of a sudden Edomites you know the Edomites are right exactly they started putting our people into political positions started giving our people certain allowing them to go to school and get higher education get degrees started making them doctors you see Jake out here on every corner at a church it's a so-called black man Right, the so-called Negro that's the head of the church. So all of a sudden, Esau started putting our people in different positions 
whether politically or an educational standpoint, most definitely a religious standpoint, to the point where we fell asleep. And we got comfortable with actually being on this so-called, so quote unquote, level playing field. Before, in the 50s and 60s, right, during the civil rights movement, our people were fighting. It wasn't really, when you look back in the history, it wasn't to just be at that same exact level playing field. They wanted a little bit more rights. Right? They understood always that we were a little bit more above. But now all of a sudden we got those same exact rights and now they just fell asleep. So keep going on that. This is Genesis chapter 49 verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Oh no, I'm sorry. Read the last phrase again. This is uh, Genesis chapter 49 verse 9. It says, Judah is a lion's wealth. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? So that's the point I wanted. It said, who shall rouse him up? Because when you actually go back into the, I'm just going to say the history of the Hebrew Israelite movement, if you will, then it was actually Judah who raised up first. And we were raised up by the spirit of, you already know, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. So the spirit of the Lord actually raised up Judah first to come out here and start preaching and teaching. And that started up north. Huh? The gathering of the people. You can say that, yes. The gathering of the people started by a man named Abba Bivens, who we believe actually to be Elijah that's spoken about in the Bible. So with that being said, he came down into the spirit of the Lord upon that man, then the actual true knowledge of the Bible was being dispersed across the planet Earth. And we come in that same stead right now, which is in that same exact doctrine. And that's the doctrine that we believe that came from the heavens, by Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. But it first started, Khan. It first started and it came to Judah. It came to Judah first, and now all the tribes are waking up. Like I said, I'm from the tribe of Gad. So is my brother right here. Go ahead, get your precept, huh? <clears throat> Romans 12 and, and 2 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of our power, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. You came across that precept before? Okay. You know what that means? Maybe come out here. Huh, that's what's up. That's good. That's good. Because it also says, which is your reasonable service. When you look at that word reasonable, I always mention it. In the Greek, it's logikos, which literally means logical. So when you think about it, it is very logical for us to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Because guess what? The scriptures say that not all of us is going to die. Now you're going to have maybe some martyrs. We understand that. But even those martyrs, what are um, first, Thess first Thessalonians 4 and 16? Even those martyrs, they're going to be the very first ones to come back in the chariots with Yahweh Shah. But with that being said, most of us are not going to have to die. That's just the reality of the situation. So even though we may be crucified with the Lord right now, meaning that all these people, they may look at us and they may say, oh, well, look at them. They don't shape up their hairs. They don't shape up their beards. They look crazy. Look at their garments or their sheets, whatever they want to call it, dresses. It really doesn't phase us. We've been crucified in order to receive a stronger a better blessing you know what i mean so that's cool with that come and then we'll go for the go ahead matthew 16 to 28 verily i say unto you there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom that's why it's very logical once you believe in this truth and like we were going into earlier you actually show that you have conviction in this doctrine by coming out here and proclaiming these words well guess what because you know that you proclaim it and you're not going to see death. That's us actually coming out here and understanding through the spirit of the Lord that it's very logical for us to do this because we don't have to die. That's the, the point of the matter. Everybody else, they don't know that famine is coming. And even if they do know it, they don't truly believe it to the point where they're, going, they're doing something about it. I talk to a lot of people at my job and they know that like World War III is coming and like financial woes are coming and everything like that but they're not really doing nothing about it but we have the answers we have the answers in this book right here the scriptures say what wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times that's all that matters like i mentioned earlier this wisdom in this book is basically an investment it's an investment and that stock is rising right now but only the men of the lord actually see that stock rising but one day it's going to catapult to the point where a lot of people are going to want to invest their time. And they're going to wish that they thought it to be very logical to do what we're doing now. 
So let's um, go back to what I call First Thessalonians. Oh yeah, let's go to that. This is First Thessalonians <laughs> chapter four, verse sixteen. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, mm -hmm. with the voice of the archangel, mm -hmm. and with the trump of the Most High. And we really believe that. That's why we're out here right now. And that's an end time prophecy too. That, that's an end time prophecy of the Lord coming back, which you can read about in many, many, many scriptures in the Old Testament as well. It's written all throughout. Isaiah, Jeremiah, definitely Ezekiel. It has prophecies of the Lord returning. And if you believe that, if you have conviction in these words, you need to do like this brother said, and you need to bring yourself out here and bring a friend if you can too. Why not? We're living in these days in which the word has already been out there anyway. Guarantee you mention it to somebody, they're going to say, oh, I knew that. Well, if you know it, then come out. Go ahead, out. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. <laughs> For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, huh? with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High. Huh? And the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. Keep going. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. With them in the clouds. Those are the ones that were dead, right? So they died in Hamashiach, it said. They died in the Lord. They believed in the proper doctrine. They were praising the Lord up until their death. What did we read earlier? You strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for you. Guess what? Even though you may have died, you died in the Lord. And what's him fighting for you? Did not the Lord say that I go to prepare a place for you? So the Lord is already fighting for you. You got to believe that and have conviction. And you're going to be, maybe, if you're that martyr, and they may be many martyrs, but you're going to be the first ones to come back with the Lord. And then it said, we which remain shall meet them in the clouds. And what's the clouds? The clouds are those chariots. Despite what anybody else wants to say, they can laugh at us, they can do whatever they want, they can say whatever they want, but guess what? When those so-called UFOs crack those skies, you're not going to be laughing. That's right. You're going to be wishing you were doing the logical thing right. and coming out here and saying the same exact thing like we say. Right. You're going to wish that you were displaying conviction. Keep going, huh? This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds uh -huh. to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Woo. And that's a beautiful thing. It says, shall we forever be with the Lord? And that's exactly what we want. That's why we're striving for this truth unto death. Remember, the Lord said that if you continue with me in my temptations, then I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me. So we're striving to be joint heirs. Uh, Bubba Kushad read Romans 8 and 17. Oh, matter of fact, we read 16. Let's read 16 again. And then go to, uh, go to 18 for me. With her little Honda, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, the scriptures talk about how we're going to be joint heirs. Oh, can you also hold? Um, can you get First John three and two, and then you just get Romans eight seventeen for me. Go ahead, I, yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry. Start at sixteen again. Romans eight sixteen. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. Uh -huh. And if children and heirs, 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 uh -huh. heirs of the Most High and joint heirs with Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. That's what it's all about. Keep going. If, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Yeah. The sufferings of this present time are not worthy. I mean, you can't even speak about the suffering if you're going to talk about the kingdom of heaven in the same sentence. Come on, man. It's not even to be compared. The scriptures talk about how this is a light affliction. So no matter how cold it gets, no matter how hot it gets, no matter how much financial woes you got going on, guess what? It doesn't matter. It's not even to be compared when we talk about the kingdom of heaven. We're going to be in the kingdom of heaven laughing at America. We're going to be laughing at how broke we were. We're going to be laughing at the weak, feeble bodies that we had. We're probably going to be laughing at how much we was complaining. You know how you look back, you're like, well, I needed to shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, what was I talking about? Like, you're going to be like, damn, I may even do that shit again. That's how we're going to be thinking. Because it's all going to be worth it. It's nothing but a light affliction to come out here. You know? But guess what? A lot of you people are soft because you grew up with your mother and your grandma. You don't know what it means to actually go through anything hard. 
to go through anything tough. Everything's been handed to you. But guess what? The Lord requires you to be a goddamn man. Right. Right. Be a man. Get out your comfort zone. Because if you don't get out your comfort zone, the Lord's going to take you out of it anyway. When that economic collapse comes, what you going to do? I bet you're not going to be a man in that day. Give Zephaniah 1 and 10. Right? Yeah, if, I, if I made that, because you know, there's a saying out in the world that there's no growth. And the Lord requires you to grow in this truth, man. Meaning what? You know, if you want to grow in the truth, the Lord is going to put you through uncomfortable situations. Right. But the beautiful, the beautiful part about it is that the Lord said that the things that he's going to give us to the things that we're going through right now is not even to be compared. I like to compare it to trying to find a penny. You know, a little bronze penny with Abraham Lincoln. Trying to, trying to find a penny in a room full of gold. That's, that's what it's to be compared to, you know? And that's what the kingdom of heaven is going to be like, man. You know, the Lord is going to give us our heart's desire, all right? And trying to find that in a room full of gold, you know, just a penny. It's going to be hard. Good off. Oh, Chrisa, go ahead. Revelation 2 and 25. For, for that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Yeah. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will like his power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Exactly. So all these Edomites that's walking by, they don't even know, but they about to be beaten down by us. We about to beat them down with a rod of iron. We got these weak ass people over top of us, but guess what? We are the top knowledge on the planet Earth. That's right. That's how we know we're already above them. We got the top knowledge. So the scriptures say to hold fast, to that knowledge that which you have. That's what's going to keep us stable. You see, sometimes you get depressed. Sometimes you get down, you may cry, you may do whatever, man. You know, at the end of the day, guess what? Knowing what's coming, that's what keeps us happy. That's what keeps you joyful. Sometimes we get down so much in our woes and everything, you forget what is. And what is is the fact that prophecy is coming to pass. And remember, if you want to be joint heirs with the Lord, you got to get out here. You got to be crucified with the Lord. The scriptures say we shall be like him. Let's get that out. First John for me. Brother got it. This is First John chapter 3, verse 2. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. So the minute that we actually came back into this truth and we were educated, meaning that knowledge was drawn out of us, it said, now are we the sons of the Most High. So that moment made you a joint heir with the Lord, but it's not going to be physically manifested until he comes back. Why? Because the Lord, Yahweh Shai, has to get his glory first. He has to get his glory first, and then judgment has to rain down. That's why it goes on to say, and I'm glad the brother read it, it does not yet appear what we shall be. Because right now, we may look like the so-called quote-unquote average nigga. We may look like an average dude, once again, with our beards all messed up. We may not have lineups. We may not have the fanciest clothes. We may not have that single family with the, you know, white picket fence, the so-called American dream. But we know what's coming to us. We know glory and power is coming to us. Keep going out. Huh. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For what? For we shall be like him. Keep going. For he shall see him for, as he is. Read that one more time. For we shall see him. Come on, I'll start over. It's uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High, mm -hmm. and it does not yet appear uh -huh. what we shall be. But mm -hmm. we know that when he shall appear, uh -huh. we shall be like him. Uh -huh. For we shall see him as he is. That's it right there. For we shall see him as he is. So we know that the Lord is coming. We know he's coming. That's why you see yourself here. We're proclaiming, think about how crazy it sounds sometimes, right? Like you really just gotta sit back and think about the first time you came in the truth and the first time you heard everything and certain things is like a little crazy to you, right? But, you know, years in, think about what we're telling people. A man that we've never seen, right? That we've literally never seen, we're describing his physical attributes in the Bible. And we're proclaiming that that man is gonna come out in the clouds in something that we've never been in. And then we're telling people that we're gonna be in that thing too. You know? How crazy does that sound? But guess what? We don't give a damn. That's right. We don't care how crazy it sounds. Get 1 Corinthians 1 and 21 for me. Yeah, that's, that's and then, uh, when, you read, uh, when you read in the New Testament in the book of Revelation, 
That's why the, uh, the Apostle John Mark, you know, uh, the men that stood so stiffly in the name of Yahweh by shooting shot. I mean, we never even saw Yahweh shot, but yet have so much faith in him. You know, that's something right there. That's to tell you something, man. Yeah. I can say this real quick. Uh -huh. People, these people don't believe in what we're saying, but as the time is progressing and you see more things going on, they're starting to see that the Lord is real. Just for instance, I just uh, saw this article. Our brothers had brought out an article to where there was a, a I mean, let me bring it out real quick. It says, the title of it says, In, inside the frantic response to mysterious slow moving blob flying over Washington. So. They know what these vehicles are, man. You know, they're gonna give it labels, slow moving blobs, UFOs, all types of things. But when it really comes down to it, they're seeing that the words that we're speaking are coming to life, man. When these things are going on. All right? You got it out. Right. Right. Grab one. It don't matter which one you grab. This is Isaiah chapter 46, verse 8. It says, Remember this and shoot yourselves, men. That's right. Bring it again to mind, O oh, ye transgressors. Exactly. Bring the wisdom and knowledge of the Lord back to mind. Let it be drawn out. Pray to the Lord that he opens up your mind, that he gives you this true knowledge. Pray for more fear. Pray for more faith. Because fear is what's going to motivate you to actually get out here. When you hear about the upcoming destruction, you should be like, all right, where is that destruction going to be? Who's going to be destroyed? You know, who's bringing the destruction? And how do I receive salvation? So bring all of that back to mind and show yourself to be a goddamn man. Who cares about what anybody else thinks? Get out your comfort zone. There has to be a day when you say, you know what? I am a Hebrew Israelite. The Lord is Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. I believe in the doctrine and I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna profess it. Even if you're not speaking it, well, guess what? You standing out here still shows that you believe in what's being spoken of. You actually getting out here and just listening. Because not only that, but you're learning at the same exact time. So what's happening simultaneously is you're showing the Lord that you have faith and then also he's building up your spirit. So your spirit is being built up and you're gaining more faith. You're gaining more spiritual gifts. That's why we come out here. So let's go to... um. Yeah, what I said. No, no. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 1 and 21. 1 Corinthians 1 and 21. For after that in the kingdom, for after that in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High, it pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Exactly. And isn't everything else that we just mentioned, didn't that all sound foolish? When you talk about UFOs, so-called UFOs being chariots, when you talk about a man that you've never seen, about the crack the clouds, when you talk about World War III and all these other nations going to bomb the U.S., doesn't that sound foolish to a lot of people? But guess what? It's all in the Bible. You believe World War III is coming? You do? You keep up with financial news and everything like that? Okay, so um, you believe in the Bible too? A little bit? Did you know that World War III is prophesied in the Bible? Okay. Come on, I got you. Let's grab that really quickly. Get that biblical shelf in Revelation. What is it? 11 and 8 or 8 and 11? Nah. Huh? Nah, the third wolf coming. Yeah. You see, look. 11 and 8. Is this the Bible you're reading from? Yes, sir. The King James Bible. That's exactly what we're reading. I'm going to show you that World War III is coming in the scriptures. Because it's something that a lot of people aren't being taught. Come on. Because when you think about 11 and 14, <laughs> I thought it was 11 and 8. When you think about the Bible, right, in terms of the Christian church, because they're the main ones that are promoting it, in the church, there's always a prosperity doctrine in terms of how to prosper in this world. And nothing's wrong with teaching prosperity, but it has to come under the proper knowledge. And what I mean by that is we can talk about prosperity, but when we speak about it, it's going to be prospering in our own land with our own laws under our under our God, serving the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when we speak about prosperity in that fashion, it's fine. But when it comes to this world right here, guess what? All of us are still slaves. It doesn't matter if we're making six figures. You're still a goddamn slave because your face ain't on that money. And your brother's face isn't on that money either. Before we even get to have our own checks, guess what? 
Esau had to take out taxes from you. So before you even get that check in your bank account, someone else is taking your money from you. And our laws, once again, aren't established anyway. So we're still slaves in this society. But now, with that being said, there's going to become a point where we actually receive salvation and we will be able to see our laws manifested on the entire earth. And we're going to be joint heirs with the Lord and we're going to be ruling. But before that, World War III is going to come. And this is what it means to truly have salvation. You're delivered from that upcoming destruction. Read that real quick. Tax, in, uh, tax, in other words, paying tribute. You know, and you're, you're a slave if you do that. This is uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse 14. Huh? It says, the second woe is past. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Right. So when the scriptures talk about a woe, the word, have you heard of the word woe? Woe. Woe, like W-O-E. Have you heard of that word? Because when I was reading the Bible and I was in a Christian church, I never heard of that word. But um, what does it mean if you heard of it? I mean, I only heard of it like, has, um, Yeah, like, I feel you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The word woe basically represents destruction. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to most of the time in the book of Revelation, you hear about it, it's talking about that second death that's coming to America. And so that second death is prophesied to come by the means of this World War III. So World War III is that third woe. Because of course we had the first and the second, but the third woe, which is World War III, hasn't come yet. But it's being prophesied right there, uh, Revelation 11 and 14, correct? So that's what that is talking about. So you know this pertains to the United States specifically? I'm going to show you. Get um, Malachi 4 and 1. We'll also get Amos, what's that? I'm uh, thinking that. Nah, um, the sinful uh, kingdom. Nah, yeah. Nine. Mm -hmm. We'll grab that so too. You can get Amos. Amos 9 and 8. Oh, and then um, Revelation 11, I mean 18. 18 and 4. Revelation 17, chapter 2. Which one you want first? Get up. Giga 17. Go ahead and grab um, Amos. This is Amos chapter 9, verse 8. It says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord power are upon the sinful kingdom, uh -huh. and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Most High. Right, so when you think about the sinful kingdom, we're going to go a little bit deeper into it, but let me ask you this. Out of all the nations, all the countries, all the lands on earth, which one has the most death and the most gruesome history in it? Say it again. Which one would you put? I put Africa. You put Africa. What happened in Africa that was more gruesome here in America? You still got slavery going on in Africa right now. You still have it going on right. Exactly. Slave trade in Libya. That's true. That's still happening. Just because, you know, I wouldn't put us at the worst. But when the people were taken from Africa, they came over here and more deaths were counted over here than in Africa. Is that not true? I mean, yeah. It's a statistical fact. Native, did you know 90 million Native Americans were killed here in America? We're talking about in the time of 1492, 1493 is when Christopher Columbus came back here in America. And he killed off more than 90 million Native American Indians. So-called Native American Indians. 